It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, it's the Forum on Eagle Television. Welcome to the program. It's brought to you by Hayes Med. Our Forum program today is going to feature a former Hayes High student who's been quite busy in his uh, since graduating. <laughs> Taylor Moyen is our guest here today on the Forum. And Taylor, you left Hayes High and went where? And then we'll find out how you yeah. got to Jerusalem <clears throat> through all of this. Mm. Uh, so first I went to two years at Heston College in Heston, Kansas. Okay. We know where that is, yep. right down the road, exactly I-35. Right. Far. You know, yeah. Yeah. And then after that I spent my next two years in Goshen, Indiana at Goshen College. Um, and I was playing tennis at both universities, that's kind of what recruited me there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that I went on to finish my master's at the University of Kansas. Tell Lawrence. me about Goshen College in Indiana. That's one, you know, I yeah. saw that on your resume. Right. It's like, huh, ah, what's that all about? Yeah, well, I'd never heard of it um, before going to Heston College, but I found out about it there. It's another Mennonite university. Both mm -hmm. are Mennonite institutions. Um, it's two hours east of Chicago. Um, the school is really known for its study abroad programs and its involvement uh, internationally in kind of trying to keep a global mindset, I would say. Now, when you talk about leaving Hayes High, when you left Hayes High, did mm -hmm. you have any idea of what you were wanting to do, or did you always, because your, your degree is in social, <laughs> right. work, correct? Yeah. So, no, I left Hayes High not even knowing what I was going to study. I maybe thought at first uh, physical therapy, to be mm -hmm. honest, but uh, when I would go to, when I went to school, I would start telling my professors, or we were, as we were trying to talk about majors, I would tell them that I'm not sure what I want to do, but I want to work with people and kind of some different mentors and professors I had, they kind of guided me in the direction of social work from that. Well, what's been interesting is you've spent the last year, in fact, you just made it back a little over a month ago, uh, from a year in Jerusalem, yeah. in Israel, uh, yeah. being a part of the programs over there and, and volunteering. What were you doing there as a volunteer? Yeah, so um, I was representing an organization called Mennonite Central Committee, which is another thing that I heard about in university. Um, and I was doing a one-year volunteer program. I actually spent my time working at a human rights organization in Beit Hanina, uh, East Jerusalem, and in the Armenian school in the old city of Jerusalem as a teacher. Now, for those of us that have not been in Jerusalem, yeah. what's it like there right now in today's world? Um, so to be honest, it's a very politically tense place. It's a, and in general has a very high tension there and just, uh, yeah, you feel the weight. Of we're talking military, we're talking... Military, political. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I don't, you know, I'm not sure how much people are educated about the history of Israel and Palestine and Jerusalem, but it's a very contentious um, political issue that part of my volunteering was, you know, uh, involved with the work, especially at the Human Rights Organization, uh, with the political and uh, international law situation in Jerusalem. Well, when you look at that, Taylor, and you're, you jump into a community from central Kansas, yeah. <laughs> did you fit in? Um, I would say, I mean, throughout the, my experience, there are different points in which I stuck out more or less. So I went there, one thing was with a ponytail, and I definitely stood out more physically then. Um, but it was actually interesting. After I cut my hair, I was often, much more often mistaken as being Arab or being an Arab, Arabic speaker, a Palestinian. Um, and I think I fit in more because I was willing to try to learn the language. I was learning Arabic and I was really trying to involve myself in the community as much as I could and really get connected with the, what was going on locally. And I think that really helped me connect and really integrate into the community. When you volunteer there, do you stay at a home? Is there a facility that you stay at? How did that work? So I was living in an apartment with one other volunteer who he's there for three years where I was just a one-year volunteer. And we were living um, on the Mount of Olives in East Jerusalem in a Palestinian neighborhood called Atur. Now, those of us that have some <laughs> biblical history, sure. Mount of Olives, obviously a very central location in Jerusalem. Yeah. Um, you'd mentioned earlier when we were talking about all the religious groups that are sure. there, some of that creates the, the, the tension that yeah. you talked about. But how does that all work on a day in, day out process? Is, is sure. there churches everywhere? Are people always heading to church? Or, or It's yeah. such a mecca for uh, religion. Right, yeah, so Jerusalem is one of the you know, most religious cities in the world in that it inhabits three of the major Abrahamic faiths, 
um, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, and it's all a very important place for um, these faiths. So, and the old city of Jerusalem, which is the walled, like historic city, um, it has four quarters. So it has the Muslim quarter, Christian quarter, Jewish quarter, and the Armenian quarter. And you know, depending on where you are in the old city, you would be interacting with people who you know would be of very different faiths, depending on where you were, what service you were getting, and and those types of things. But on a day in day out basis, um, you know, people manage personal relationships pretty well. So I, w I would say that the issue is not about an in like inability to relate on a personal level, but more systemic and um, political reasons of conflict. When you got off the plane, you probably had one idea of what to expect. When you uh -huh. got on the plane to come home, what were the sure. differences? Well, when going into it, I really focused on I wanted to have zero expectations because I didn't want to have an idea of what my experience would or should be and then try to always be comparing it to that. So I kind of went in as blank slate as I could and I think that really helped me to just like take, in, take it in as it was rather than trying to create something that wasn't a reality there. But I would say I was surprised coming back how the transition back into Western culture has been more intense than I would have thought. Like the re-culture shock, they say, or the reintegration has been more of a different experience than I once maybe thought. Is that because of media? Is that because of people you know? Is that because of the freedoms that we experience here to just go do whatever? Um, I think part of it is, so obviously, no matter where you're living, a year's a lot happens in a year. So you go through a lot of ups and a lot of downs, a lot of great things, a lot, also a lot of challenges and valleys maybe. And so I'm experiencing all these things, but in the context where maybe I don't speak the language or the culture is different or all these different things. So of course that brings a lot of intensity, but also a lot of joy and amazing experiences. Um, and so I don't know, I think those things really impact how you view you know, your worldview impacts mm -hmm. how you experience everything and your perspective. So when you go and experience a year like that and you come back, maybe your friends have an idea of who you were. Or maybe your family thinks, oh, this is who Taylor is and this is how he acts. Well, maybe I experienced a lot of changes this year just like everyone else. And I'm having to reconcile that with being, in a, again, in an entirely reintegrating into my home community or what I grew up with, which now feels quite foreign, you know. Well, it's going to be fun. I have some questions. In fact, I have a whole list of questions. Sure. I want to talk a little bit about one, you know, one, what you want to do, but two, some of the political environment. Sure. Because while you were over there, we had an election in the U.S. Yeah. So I'm curious how that was viewed and, and how Absolutely. people accepted you uh, being an American mm -hmm. there. Our guest, Taylor Amoyan, who is a former Hayes High grad that's just spent a year in Jerusalem in the country of Israel. Back with more after this. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Pulse, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Pulse-certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual-band modem and router, plus discrete access points to deliver wall-to-wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Pulse powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Pulse. Wi-Fi made simple. Only from Eagle Communications. Call today. Welcome back to the second half of our forum program here on Eagle Television. Our guest is Taylor Amoyan, who has just returned from Israel after a year of volunteering over there. We have some great uh, questions to ask. Stay with us. But if you have an idea or suggestion for a future show, let me know. Gary.Shorman at Eaglecom.net, or you can go on to Facebook under ECTV Forum. You'll find us there, and you can jot your question or idea for a program at that site as well. Again, our guest, Taylor Amoyan, who has just returned from Israel, a year there, right in the middle and the heart of Jerusalem and, and the areas there of Israel. Obviously a very tense time. Were you ever fearful? Um, not in the way that you would expect. 
Um, so I never had, especially with ideas of what it means to be in an Arabic speaking place or the Middle East, a lot of, especially people in the West, maybe from media or different things have ideas of what it means to be in that type of setting. And I would like to, I guess, just openly say that my experience was completely the opposite of what people would probably think as far as being, you know, at the risk of violence all the time or having these, like seeing extremist oper uh, occurrences or things like that. That wasn't a part of my experience at all. So really, no, I, it wasn't a year in which I felt more fear throughout instances. It was more about experiencing an overall political tension that I would say kind of weighs on you psychologically or mentally rather than feeling like I'm always going to be physically threatened. Well, you were over there during the political election uh, here in the U.S., obviously. Yeah. Uh, President Trump now in office, mm -hmm. Obama leaving. The media has been all sides of that, right. both good and bad. How did that affect your experience there? Because you being an American, it's sure. like, what's this all about? Yeah. So one thing, just being an, an American or an international any place, you kind of feel like your actions are more used to represent the culture that you're representing. So it's not just you as an individual, but whatever I would be doing would probably be interpreted through the lens of being a Westerner or an American. Um, and as far as the political situation, the election actually did have some initial ramifications. Um, so one of the things I would say that I noticed, a lot of my work was in human rights and documenting the situation in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so uh, settlement building <coughs> is, to get a little bit more political and specific, is an, it's illegal under international law and it's basically bringing um, Israeli Jewish population onto Palestinian land mm -hmm. um, and bringing that population um, basically against the rights or the international law of the Palestinian mm -hmm. community. And those, I would say, surged and the plans increased for that post-Trump uh, election. So I would say that was one of the major political differences that I saw um, initially. When you look at the news and you would look at the evening news or whatever yeah. news over there, in your case, probably it was online off, mm -hmm. of, uh, off of your phone or iPad. Yeah. But what was the news media like there and how did they treat the U.S. election? And because it seems like maybe Trump was maybe a little more pro-Israel. Sure. At least that's what we heard. Sure. Was it the same thing on in Israel? Um, was that good or bad? It's interesting. So the most of the sources I was checking would be would have been sources that I was probably checking about before going there. Mm -hmm. So there were some you know Middle Eastern news sites that I would check, for instance. But if it was a political issue, maybe I would still be checking some Western news sources. But um, it was interesting to see how that was portrayed. And I would say sometimes you'd be surprised by people's political affiliation, even in Palestine and Israel. So yeah, seemingly a lot of people would think, oh, Trump is much uh, more pro-Israel, which I would say, um, yeah, that's the case. But it's not like all Palestinians are Trump support, or sorry, yeah, are Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. I met, um, sorry, I, should, I meant the opposite of that. Not all Palestinians oppose Trump. I met some Palestinians that were definitely mm -hmm. pro-Trump, but there's political diversity among yes, right. any people group, right. But in general, yeah, I would say Trump, and as far as the environment and conversation that he has around Israel-Palestine, I don't think would be one that Palestinians would feel represented on or feel like they're getting any voice or room at the table, if that makes sense. Now, I understand that you spent a couple days a week in an Armenian school. Yes. And what was, what, what was that like, and what, what were you learning there? Sure. So I was actually uh, volunteering as a teacher there. Um, my last name is... Ermoyan, which is an Armenian last name. They wouldn't pronounce it that way, but in the West, that's how we say how it. How would they say it? They would say Ermoyan, Ermoyan. Okay. Um, and so I didn't actually go there planning to work at the school. That was set up <clears throat> kind of randomly. I met a Palestinian Armenian in Bethlehem, which is just four miles, three or four miles from Jerusalem at a friend's house. He found out I was Armenian, and I, was told, him, I told him I was looking for some opportunity to be able to work with kids or directly get some direct client um, interactions because with mm -hmm. my social work background, that's par partially what I wanted. Um, and so he got me an interview at the school and a few months later I started and it was great. I was teaching social work to some of the 12th grade students to prepare them for life after high school. I was teaching one student English, a fourth grade student, and I was substituting. Um, and it, it was a wild experience because most of the students there are quadlingual. Um, they speak Armenian, Arabic, English, and Hebrew, almost all of them. So 
it's pretty hmm. wild how yeah many languages they speak at the school. One of the things I know, jumping in, and we're going to circle back to Hayes High mm -hmm. and some suggestions for others there, but were there some surprises that you weren't prepared for when you got over there? Of course. I mean, every, every day was, at, at first especially, it just feels like an adventure. Um, or even going to get fruit or vegetables. At first, when my Arabic was so poor, it's terrifying. And, you know, you don't, like, you want to limit all your interactions because... If they ask you a question in Arabic, even if you know how to say, I want this, maybe they're going to ask you a question after that and you'll be completely stumped. So one learning I would say I really had, even just being a foreigner there and international, is I think a greater appreciation or empathy for what it's like to be like a refugee here or immigrant and just the fear, anxiety, or struggle or challenges that can come with that because... Just to communicate. Just to communicate or, yeah, or the potential anxiety of any interaction really or just how to navigate a new system or a new culture, you really learn the challenges of that and hopefully a greater understanding to help others who are experiencing that in your own home community. Well, I'm sure that'd be an amazing experience. And, and you know, you look at somebody that might be watching from Hayes High or mm -hmm. in high school right now, sure. maybe in college saying, is it worth doing this? Is it worth going overseas? Yeah. And, and they say, maybe taking the risk, maybe not, right. but doing overseas, is it worth it? I would say for me, absolutely. Uh, First of all, though, I would say, like, so I'm passionate about these things, and I'm passionate about encountering other cultures and maybe trying break, breaking down different stereotypes we have about different parts of the world or trying to work for a greater sense of greater justice. And if that's something you're passionate about, you can definitely do that on the international level, and you can also do that on the local level. And whatever that is, if you're passionate about, you know, spending time abroad or learning another language or learning from a different culture, I would say absolutely, go for it. It's always worth it. The, like... Yeah, it's a risk, you know, you'll definitely have hard times. I would say it was one of the most challenging years of my life, but of course, one of the most great, greatest experiences as well, one of the best years of my life. So, so after you do that for a year, what's next for Taylor? <laughs> so I'm taking a little chill time right now. I'll be back in Hayes for a few weeks, and then I plan to move uh, out west coast after this to the Los Angeles area, and I'm applying for a social work job. So if I could work uh, with Arab-speaking refugees, I would love that. Uh, I was working with refugees the year before I did this in Kansas City, um, and I'm really interested in that. So maybe something like that. We'll see. Well, Taylor, look forward to following your next adventure over there. Uh, good to have you back yeah. in Hayes Thank and, you. and this area, and good luck going forward. Appreciate it. Thank you. Taylor Amorian has been our guest here on the Forum program on Eagle Television. The Forum is brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications, our community connected. It's a beautiful day in our super high-speed internet great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected.